What's up guys, it's your boy Damon and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today, for the short form video for the free to play beginners beginner guide, I wanted to kind of recap what we talked about and I really wanted to get into how to really make your first 6 star. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions as to, you know, what do I level? Do I level Phantasmas? How do I make 6 stars so fast? You know, etc. So I really wanted to get in on this just because I know a lot of people out there are wondering. Because I'm a main account nowadays, I could probably do, like let, yesterday I did 2 6 stars, but it takes me about 5 to 6 hours to do 1. So in today's video, we're going to touch on that. We're also going to talk about 1010 and, you know, what I went through and how to really get through that kind of painlessly using the exact same team that I set out on. As you guys can see, my next mission over here is to promote a hero to six star. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. All right, so getting into this, the first thing I did, guys, because as you guys know, the last episode, we stopped right at 1010 and wasn't able to do it. So what I went ahead and did was leveled up my characters a little bit more because at this point, you know, it's just grading, grading up and leveling up your characters really helps as well. And I went ahead and improved my gear. Now the thing that got me over the hump, and this is something like if you guys are struggling with 1010, like just playing the game or leveling up like a little bit more can really help you out while ranking up your account. Because you guys know that you guys have a account rank level, as you guys can see here, rank 27, rank 26, etc. And as you guys rank up, because it's relatively easy to rank up, they'll automatically suggest you new reps. So I ended up using somebody's crowd that somebody had already six starred, but if you guys kind of pay attention to this, you guys can find decently leveled reps or decently geared reps that are, you know, close in the beginning to kind of help you guys out if you guys are getting stuck at 1010, if you guys need to get over that hump. Now, what I summoned was Rekorus. If you guys <laughs> have seen the stream, you guys saw that. You guys saw that I fed my three stars already. However, what I recommend is that if you guys are summoning unique ML three stars, just hold on to them. You know, try to get them to triple S first before you guys decide to get rid of them. I just I just mashed them because I knew I really had no intention of using the guy. But yeah, you know, just for future reference, that's what it is. But let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes. Today we're going to talk about how exactly to determine how to really six star your heroes. Now, the first things first, guys, when you're looking at how to six star your heroes, the first question you really got to ask yourself is what type of catalyst do I need? So, for instance, if I'm going to my Clarissa and I'm looking at her abilities, what are the most important abilities I need? Defense break is probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest, harmful effect to apply, especially for early game. So I want defense break to be as consistent as possible. So I'm looking to get her skill one minimum to plus four. So I know I need three, four. I need four twisted things here. So that's the first thing I'm looking at, right? And then I'm going to look at my Bail and Suzanne, right? I'm going to say, okay, what does Bail and Suzanne need? Because now the new and improved Bail and Suzanne is pretty good, right? He's really, really good. So I'm like, okay, well, what do I need here? I need Rings of Glory. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself in a situation where I can farm either one and or both if I have that opportunity. And I'm going to split my farming up. So for the sake of example today, I'm going to farm 8-6 on normal. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself in a situation where I can, you know, maybe use one or two heroes to complete a stage with two fodder or three fodder, right? So I'm here. Like for now, I'm leveling Clarissa plus three. Now, a lot of people, like, they, they level up their birds, or birds, <laughs> your phantasmas, those little wolf dudes. But personally, for me, I'm not really a fan of leveling phantasmas in combat. How I like to level my phantasmas is by using the free penguins and stuff that they give you, cause, just because it's just easier, right? Because it's such a pain to, like, you got to position your phantasmas. It'd be easier if you can use multiple phantasmas. Like, if, for instance, if I could run three silver phantasmas in, you know, a leveling situation, then, of course, I would level them that way. But since I can't, I just don't like to do it, right? So I'll typically use my stigma to get phantasmas, convert the phantasmas to three stars, or convert the phantasmas from three stars to four stars uh, using like the fodder that I've made. But typically speaking, I just level my fodder creatures instead of my wolves so I can keep foddering consistent. Now, typically what I do is going to be dependent on how much actual fodder I have. If you guys don't know what fodder is, fodder is just, you know, the monsters that you intend on feeding to other monsters to, to evolve them to the next grade. But what I'm going to do depends on how much fodder I have. And, and what I try to do is create a endless feedback loop. And what I mean by that is, so let's say, for instance, I was managing my team. 
Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down. You guys can see that I'm starting to get my phantasmas ready. Um, but the first thing that I'm gonna check is I'm gonna look at how much fodder I have. So for instance, I've already extended my hero inventory to 300. So that way I have max cap inventory here. So I'm able to, you know, do whatever I need to do and get as much stuff as I need. But I'm gonna look at as many two stars as I can. In this situation, I don't really have that many two stars, right? But you know, I have enough to be okay for a while. And depending on how many two star fodder I have is gonna determine the method that I take because I wanna put myself in a position where I never run out of two stars, essentially. So what I'll do is if I have a ton of two star fodder, let's say my monster inventory is close to being full and I got all two stars. At that point, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna level these two stars into two star max and I'm gonna convert them as, into three stars, period. Three star, three star, three star, three star, three star to kind of thin out my inventory. But once I have all three stars, like after I've cleared out my inventory a significant amount, what I'll do is then I'll level them to three star max, okay? And the reason I'm leveling the three star max is then to convert as many three star maxes as I can to four star. And then once I complete as many four stars as I can, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put as many four stars in the party as, as I need to and level them to four star max. And then by the time I get to four star max, then I'll have, it'll replenish all of my two stars and then I can start over. Now that's the scenario that I run if I have tons of two stars. Now if I'm starting out and let's say I only have three two stars and it's it's life is hard. I don't have any friendship points because normally if I have friendship points I could just summon. But let's say in this situation I don't have any friendship points because my rep is a pleb and nobody's probably using it, right? So if I don't have any two stars what I'm going to do is let's say I only have three. I'll use these three. By the time I level them to two star max I should have enough to convert them to three three stars. Then I'm gonna level those three three stars to three star max first, and then I'm gonna go back to the next set of two stars. Because by the time they get to three star max, then I'll have enough, you know, enough two stars to start over again. Then I'll do another set of two stars to two star max, then make them three stars, then from three star to three star max, and then I'll rinse repeat that until I get a ton of two star fodders, right? And then when I have a ton of two star fodders again, then I go back to step one, which is turn all my two stars to three stars, make as many three star maxes as I can, convert them to four stars, right? And then make some more four star maxes. So that way it's always in a cycle, right? Cause situations are like, let's say you're just like leveling fodder in a dungeon or taking your fodder to like spirit altar, you'll run out of fodder real quick, right? And then you're just kind of stuck. And then if you run out of friendship points, you could potentially lead yourself to a stalemate. So I like to avoid that. So that's kind of a technique that I use just to just go. Now, ideal heroes, like if you guys have Vildred, says pretty much any type of AoE hero, Clarissa's another really, really good one, but any type of AoE hero that's geared well enough to basically level for you. And like I said, it's ultimately gonna be dependent on what catalyst you need, so try to find a stage where you can run two or three fodder at a time while still trying to get the catalyst that you need for your skill ups. And then from there, everything else is cake. And if you guys are wondering, like, okay, D, well, what kind of gear do I, you know, put on this character? And that's ultimately just going to go to the free stuff that they give you anyway, right? So as you guys are going through the adventurer's path, like, that stuff is going to get you, you know, whatever you need. And in, in terms of intention on my account to make six stars, I'm probably going to six star Clarissa and Bale and Suzanne first. Because these two, either or, could be my farmer. And they're going to be my primary damage in my Wyvern team. So with those, then I can, you know, position to where... A, now that they're 6 star, I can kill stronger stuff. Once I get the 70 attack set, I can put that either on Clarissa or Bale, and we can just have a field day. Because then what's going to happen is once we start positioning, getting further in the abyss, I'm going to get another set of gear, the lifesteal set that I could put on Clarissa or put on Bale, and you know that gear can go up to 85, and then we have two DPS in place, and those two sets of gear, for sure, I'm going to get to 15. Those are going to be my first plus 15 sets. And then from there, it's just, you know, farming the dungeon of choice. So for me, it's going to be Wyvern 11 um, until I get the gear that I need for my supports, which are going to be Terran Royal Guard and Aether. And then once we have that in play and their stats are where they need to be, then it's just a matter of moving up in the dungeons and then continuing to work on, you know, Wyvern 11 so we could be good to go. In terms of gear updates, I didn't really get no gear. <laughs> just because we were kind of moving around the scenario. Yesterday, I did get a new chest piece that was crafted from one of the quests that gave me free materials. So I got a decent chest piece for Aether, but that's about it. I did, uh, however, put some put my Terminal Royal on full crit, just because 
I'm trying to maximize on the HP based damage that he deals even though he reflects damage on his passive I still want to get the damage dealt increased proportional to his max health so at least when he does get a turn if he gets a turn when, he, when we get to Wyvern 11 he's still going to be able to deal at least a little bit of damage to contribute to the rest of the team. And then from there, guys, I mean, it's pretty much a smooth ride home. I'm going to make sure to get this guy as much HP as we possibly can. Uh, first goal for him is 10k with, you know, 1,000 defense, right? And then we're going to try to push that to 1,400 defense and then 15,000 plus health, which shouldn't be too hard, uh, you know, as we kind of pull through. In terms of Aether, I want to get Aether to 200 speed, okay? As much attack power as possible. And I want to get him with as much health and defense as possible so he can also survive uh, throughout, you know, Wyvern 1 to 10. And then when we look at Bale and Suzanne and Clarissa, both of them I'm intentionally building in a way where now we're getting close to 100% crit here with Clarissa, 208% crit damage, right? So she can maximize her damage. And I want to keep the effectiveness there as, as, as much as I can so she can apply her harmful effects when need be. Also, I want to get this attack to 3,000, okay? And after that, I mean, pretty much good to go. Health and defense, defense to 800, health to 10K, just because, you know, again, we need to survive through, we need to survive up through or up until, you know, Wyvern 11, where she's not really going to get hit anymore. So that's what we're looking at there. And Bale is pretty much going to be the same thing. Much attack power as possible. The health plus the defense, of course. Maybe some speed, but mostly maximizing the crit crit damage and keeping his effectiveness moderately high as well. So with that being said, guys, you guys can expect the next episode on Saturday, Saturday, maybe Friday or Saturday. We'll have the next episode for this because uh, like I said, I'm only going to be playing this account when I stream this. So that way you guys can see everything. You guys know everything it takes to get from, you know, one to 10 to 11. And then we'll talk about transitioning once we get to 11 to really start building a PVP team. We'll climb Arena, we'll do Banshee, we'll do Golem. We'll pretty much do everything that you guys probably have questions about to help you guys progress through the game in a manner that's pretty efficient. Okay, so if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comment box below. And with that being said, we will see you guys in the next video.